Hi guys, today we have another exciting video. The mistakes that I made when starting my blog slash the mistakes that you do not wanna make starting your blog or that you have with a blog. Basically, it's just talking about mistakes that can be done with blogging and things that I've had to learn the hard way. So let's get in to all of these blogging tips. Okay, first things first, the last video or last two videos have had the most annoying noise in it. And we think that it's the like zoom thing on the camera auto focusing. So I turned it off. So I'm hoping slash praying that this is focused. If it's slightly out of focus, I'm sorry. The information will be the same. Also, I have you set up in a different area of the office, but we thought that this would be a really good video idea and email idea. P.S. If you are not on our email newsletter, make sure to subscribe to it. It's filled with so much great information that's obviously free because it is an email. So we'll have the box down or like a link down below where you can subscribe to it. Okay, back on topic, Sophie. All right, so I have made a ton of mistakes since starting this blog four years ago. If you don't know kind of what I'm talking about, I started a blog called By Sophia Lee four years ago now, which is wild. I feel like I say that every video, like this is so crazy, it's been four years, but it actually is crazy. And since then, I started when I was in sophomore year of college. I was in my dorm room starting my blog. I have turned it into a seven figure business. So we make over a million dollars from my blog now. I say we, because it is not just I anymore when we started, or when I started, it was just me. But now we have a team of six people and every single pe every single person on the team is crucial. Obviously business has changed a lot in the last four years from going from when it was just me to making absolutely nothing to now being at this point. But I think in the process of all of it, there are things to take away from and things that I look back and think, pat on back, you did a great job and other things that I'm like, what were you thinking? Like, how did you not think of this? How, just, I don't know, so many things. But let's get into the different mistakes that I've made or that I've seen a lot of bloggers make in their blogging journey. First things first, don't spend a lot of money on extras. So when you start your blog, there's certain things that I think that you need to spend money on. I'm not even gonna go into those because we have so many videos talking and just about like how to start your blog and the different things that you need for that. So we'll have those videos linked below. But what I have learned and what still is an issue for me is that every single company's job is to sell you something. And when they sell you something, they try to add in extras that you literally cannot say no to. Of course they're gonna do that, that's good business practice as they should do that because they make a lot of money off of it because it's hard not to say that you wanna buy it. But I will give you an example. When you get blogging hosting, they're going to try to throw you in a ton of extras like security and other things like that. I want to lightly go over this because if something happens, I don't want it to be my fault. So do your own research as with everything, make sure that you're looking into everything and not just fully listening to me or anyone for that matter. But I just find that it's an upsell that you don't need to spend. There are so many people that start blogs and then they go nowhere. Like I know every single one of us knows someone that started a blog and it's gone nowhere and it's not worth the money. Like you should invest in your blog or invest more money, just put the minimum amount down that you need in the beginning to get you started. And then once you're actually making money, then you can put more and more towards your blog. Number two, this is a question that I get asked all the time and it is at what point should you publish your blog? So should you write a ton of blog posts and then publish it or um, should you start publishing the blog post right away? This is something um, that I strongly encourage and believe is that you should be publishing your blog post as soon as you're done with them. The chances of someone other than your mom or your brother or your boyfriend or girlfriend or wife or whatever it is, the chances of someone else besides them looking at your blog in the beginning is so slim and rare unless you're coming to it with a following already. Publish it right away. No one's gonna be looking at your blog and the longer that Google has to read through your information, the faster that you're going to get ranked. 
which ranking is so important. So you're gonna want, you'll learn, if you're new to, you'll learn all this verbiage. But basically ranking is really important. Key to having a successful blog, you wanna rank on everything. There's a strategy behind it, blah, blah, blah. I go on about this in all of our videos. So just go check out the other videos if you're curious about it, but sum that up. Just publish your blog post right away. Number three is something that I never talk about. I refuse to talk about it. I never will talk about it, but it is important. And this is probably the biggest mistake that I personally made when starting my blog. And that was, I did not think about anything legal at all. I did not, nothing like that crossed my mind. One of my biggest downfalls in my business and just like with this house business that we're doing and basically everything is that I don't know what I don't know. And so there have been multiple times in this blogging journey where I do something wrong, but I didn't know I was doing something wrong. So I didn't know to avoid it. So this is my little push to you on what I've learned is that you need to have disclosures. So you need to have like an affiliate disclosure at the top of every single blog post. You need to have other disclosures. So like now we have lawyers just cause of like where we're at with our business. But in the beginning I could not afford a lawyer. Like I was a broke college student. And so when I learned that I had to think about the legal side of things, there is a lawyer who is specific, who now works specifically for bloggers and she basically has really inexpensive templates. So her um, name is, um, shoot, what's her name? I know her name like really well. Why can I not remember this? Actually, let's call Sarah. Because Hello. What is the lawyer, the blogging lawyer that I've used? Amira. Amira Law. What is it? <laughs> I never remember her name. Amira. Amira. Amira Law Blog? Amira Law Blog, I think. Oh, a self guru. A self guru. Okay. All right, thanks. Moral of all of that is, is that she has templates out there where you can go and then put in your own information. So she's a lawyer by trade. So she, they're like totally legit and it's just a way cheaper way to do it than hiring a lawyer. But it's something that you definitely need to think about when you are in those first phases of your blog. Another thing with that, again, I do not want to be responsible for any legal thing, so I don't talk about this like ever, but you cannot use other people's photos. You cannot copy other people. Like I have seriously had people copy the exact way that my website has looked, like same theme. Um, their name will be by, this is like, Technically they can do it, but it's just like ridiculous. We do send cease and desists. We've sent them multiple times. Don't copy people. Don't use other people's photos. You can get in serious trouble for this. And not only that, it's just so annoying to the other blogger. And I remember everyone who has copied my blog, like because it is a long discussion. We get our lawyers involved. We've had multiple meetings with lawyers where we basically dig deep down and take screenshots of everything. So not to scare you, but that is something that I didn't really even consider. Like when I first started my blog, I used other people's photos. You can't do that. And so I learned that, okay? And then I had to go in back and switch all of the photos out, which is just a pain. And it just looks bad when you use other people's photos without giving credit or just using them in general. So now what we do is we get permission for every single photo that we use or we take our own photos, or we use a stock photo website. The best way to do it is to use your own photos. So we've like really started using our own photos way, way more um, now, but basically don't copy people. You can get yourself in big legal trouble. I've seen bloggers get themselves in big legal trouble. I've come after people who've done it and it's just not worth it. So think about, think about that. Next, think about what you're going to make money from like think about your angle so are you starting a blog to simply make money are you starting a blog to talk about your life or like as a diary are you starting a blog slash like website for your business there's multiple different things that you can be starting blogs for and i believe that there's multiple different angles that you should be taking based on 
what you're trying to do. If you're trying to start a diary type of blog, don't invest any money into your website. All you need for that is a Blogspot blog, a free Squarespace one. I just don't, I mean, you can do whatever you want, but um, I just don't personally think that there's like specific things that you need to be doing for those type of diary sort of blogs. If you are looking to start a blog that makes money, there are certain things that you have to do to set yourself up in the future to make money and just get yourself very legit and not in like a, your information's legit, but like legit in a way that you can bring on affiliates and sell things and different stuff like that. And then the last one, I'm sure there's other ones, but the last like main one is if you're starting a website for your business. So like an example of that is my father, well, he's like, my boyfriend and I are not married, but I always call like his siblings, brother-in-law and sister-in-law. Some people think that's weird. And then his parents like mother-in-law and father-in-law because we've been together since we were like 14 years old. So at this point, this point, I'm just waiting for the ring, but um, he has a website that is clearly a different angle. Did I say he owns a countertop business? I don't know if I did, but he, he has a website that is way different than like if you're gonna start a blog like my website. So if I was doing something like a website like that, I personally would, I mean, you have to think about SEO for that but not as much as you do for like a blog that writes posts that you wanna rank for. But basically there's different angles that you can take when you're starting your blog based on what type of blog that you want to have. There's different amounts of money that you need to spend and I think that it is worth your time. Don't spend a ton of time on this, but worth your time researching what type of blog that you want to have so that you can follow what's best for that angle for what I talk about on like this channel and on the blogging side of my website. My website is like not about blogging. My website's about like home decor and we call it like a lifestyle home blog type of thing. But what I talk about is that a blog that makes money. So that's where like all of our content is geared to. But if you ha are trying to do a certain one, I'd find someone else that can give you tips or I mean, yeah. That's what I'm gonna say for that one because I feel like I'm really not getting my point across strongly or clearly. <laughs> okay, this is huge. When you start your blog or even like in the beginning phases of your blog, you wanna be really strategic with what social media sites you start on. And there's a few reasons for that. But the only reason I'm really gonna hit on here is that it is so overwhelming. Like I personally get so overwhelmed trying to manage all the different content streams. And I cannot even think about how I would have managed it as a full-time college student, also having another job and trying to get this business running, which that's that was my situation when I started this blog. Like I wouldn't have had time for it and I would have ended up failing with my website because of how overwhelmed I was. So the only thing, the only social media site that I recommend you starting on is and I've slightly changed this answer this in this past year, but it is obviously your website. Okay, so that's like no brainer. But then Pinterest. Pinterest has been my all time go to. So when I started my blog, I only had Pinterest for the first three years. So we only launched social media in the last year and a half. Um, and basically, Pinterest is the only social media website that people go to specifically to get people to your website. So like Instagram, you scroll and look at pictures. The conversion rate from Instagram to my, our website by Sophia Lee is so, so low compared to Pinterest where Pinterest is like one of our top traffic sources. And then this is what I've slightly changed my answer to in the last year is TikTok. But that is similar to you have to have the angle where TikTok makes sense for you because TikTok is something that you're obviously like going to need to put your face on and talk to it. So I think like TikTok, TikTok, the reason I'm saying TikTok is because TikTok has such, you can be found on TikTok on like any other platform. Like Instagram takes so freaking long to grow on. It is like actually annoying. Where TikTok, I started TikTok in August. I put so much more effort into my Instagram. It's not even funny. And my Instagram is at like 40,000 followers and my TikTok's at 300,000 followers. So you can just grow so much faster on TikTok and you can't do that any other platform. I still have not figured out 
yet how to get people from TikTok to the website. So if you want to start a TikTok or you think that that's worth it for your business, that would be a type of website where you're really trying to brand yourself and not necessarily like rank on SEO. And then lastly, this is another thing that we messed up on, aka me messed up on, is taxes. Once you start making money on your website, this is the boring side of owning a business. When you start a blog to make money, you are starting a business. It is fully a business. Um, and as you start to make money, you're going to need to start paying taxes. So you need to pay taxes and like also do your own research on this because I don't know if this is just Wisconsin and also it could change any second. So if you make over $600, you need to pay taxes on something. I'm not an accountant either. So who knows if that's actually right, but I'm 99% positive. If you make over $600, you need to pay for taxes. So that's awesome. You want to make that much money on your blog, but just have in the back of your mind that you need to put money aside. Don't go spend it all because you're going to have to pay taxes with it eventually. So that's my two cents on that one. All right. That sums up that video with blogging mistakes and things that I've messed up on. I kind of want to do a follow up on it because I feel like this would be a great something to do like next year where I've kind of been thinking about it. So like anytime I make a mistake, I can write it down in my phone and then we can have like a little more precise video because that was kind of like an overall situation, which I like like the nitty gritty. So I want to know like the exact things, but if you could please give some more video ideas or questions that you have about blogging that we can turn into these blogging videos. Please let me know what questions you have or that you'd like to see for a video and then make sure to subscribe to the channel. I will see you at next week's video.